Welcome to The Policy Shop, weekly conversations with public policy experts where we'll dive into the most important issues affecting all of us here in Illinois. I'm Hillary Gowans. Let's get started. Joining me today is Bryce Hill, Senior Research Analyst at the Illinois Policy Institute. Census numbers came out two weeks ago that rocked a narrative people thought was solid as stone. Illinois' long-standing problems with population loss. Bryce Hill is here to dispel misinterpretations about what's really going on. Bryce, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I, I saved Governor Pritzker's tweet welcoming all of the new residents to the state. And uh, you and I had exchanged some, some analysis on that. But I have to ask you, <laughs> is Illinois actually gaining population? So the short answer is no. Um, Illinois is actively losing uh, over 100,000 residents a year annually now. Um, and has likely been doing so for the past eight or so years. Um, however, you know, updated census data, different census releases with different intentions have kind of led to some confusion about what is actually happening. And as you mentioned, Governor Pritzker's tweet claiming that the state's growing by 250,000 residents um, also didn't help that narrative, uh, but, but that's just quite simply not true. Why, why are people so confused by this release? Maybe you could walk us through, because you mentioned the, the idea of intentions. So there are different kinds of census releases, right? So what did this release actually show us and what was it all about? Yeah, so this specific release, uh, it's called the Post Enumeration Survey, and it basically just aims to fact check the decennial census. So after every, the census, that the official census count that's done every 10 years, um, they basically do a fact check and an audit of that census to see, you know, how accurate do we actually think it was. And they uh, essentially sample um, about 160,000 uh, households over 10,000 city blocks that are supposed to be representative of um, not only states, but the nation in general. And they get responses based on that um, and compare them to, you know, were these people, can we match this to a response in the census count? Um, were these people's responses accurately recorded? Is there any information that was recorded in the census that isn't quite accurate based on the information we learned from this current survey? Like, you know, maybe they were expecting a child before April 1st of the census year and it was actually born after, um, you know, or maybe, you know, they suddenly moved and after they responded to the census or they responded to the census uh, you know, somebody who splits time between uh, two different states. Uh, so there's all kinds of different ways that that the Census Bureau's official count, which, you know, they send somebody to every single household in the United States until actually this past year where they let you respond online. But there's all kinds of ways that, that the census, official census count can, um, you know, have discrepancies and inaccuracies because people are responding to it ahead of time before April 1st, based on, you know, what they expect on April 1st. And, you know, there's also oftentimes confusion about, you know, do I, who do I count in my household? Like, let's say I have kids who are currently home from college due to COVID. Um, those people are, you know, when they're spending the majority of their time out of state, though, they are normally recorded as uh, residents of a different state for census purposes. Um, so there's all kinds of different things that can crop up to, to lead to, um, you know, quote unquote inaccuracies in the, in the official count. And the purpose of the post enumeration survey is to just fact check that, say, you know, here's what we said the resident population was. Uh, here's what we actually estimate it to be based on, you know, statistical sampling and methods. Um, and we kind of compare the two. And, you know, this, this year found uh, that the 2020 census likely undercounted the resident population in the state by about 250,000 people. Um, that would imply that, you know, if that 250,000 is correct, that's like the mid range of their estimate. It could be miscounted, undercounted by as much as, you know, nearly 400,000 or undercounted by as little as 60,000. But either way, um, the midpoint of their estimates, 250,000 roughly. Uh, so that would push Illinois' total population above 13 million for the first time ever, um, higher than in the 2010 census. And so that's kind of where this confusion came uh, because. Uh, we're comparing, you know, 
one census count to another census count, which showed a decline, uh, 2010 to 2020 census counts. And then we're also comparing you know, the official 2020 count to the quote unquote fact check, the PES uh, of the census uh, count, which actually shows you know a higher number than implied. But the larger point with that is it doesn't actually show you uh, evolutions over time. It doesn't say anything about the 2010 census. It doesn't say anything about, you know, what the arc of population growth year over year or change year over year has been. Uh, all it tells you is that today, present day, this is the most accurate estimate that we can come up with. Uh, we actually think that the 2020 count was an undercount. So you mentioned the 250,000 figure. And that's what people ran with. I remember seeing so many headlines that said Illinois grew over the past decade by 250,000 people, where over 13 million people as a state for the first time in a long time. Um, so you just explained the, the data release and what it's intended to show and do. But why did that narrative catch on fire? I think it, it really took hold because it showed something different than what the Census Bureau's annual estimates of population change. So just like, you know, every 10 years they do the official count and then they they audit the official count to see how accurate it was. In the years in between, you know, we want to have some indication of what is happening with the state population. So the Census Bureau also tracks every single year in between components of change to the population. So they track, you know, birth and death records, uh, tax returns, um, migration, things like that from federally documented sources. Um, and when there aren't federally documented sources available for things like, you know, uh, some international migration and stuff like that, um, they also use survey data uh, to, to try to observe all that. Um, so, so basically for the years in between, they have an extremely reliable way to document essentially how many people are moving in and out, how many people were born, how many people were died, and how many people from overseas came into the country. Um, you know, and that, roughly speaking, will include both uh, documented and, un and undocumented immigration into the state. Um, so there are pretty reliable uh, ways to estimate the components of population change. And so those components of population change surveys have been saying that Illinois' population peaked in 2014 and that every year since uh, the state's been in decline. Uh, so, you know, the projections for over that time period were that the state actually shrunk by, you know, 240-ish thousand people. Um, I think the reason why this narrative caught hold is because it, it showed kind of the opposite um, or at least people perceived it to show the opposite, not that it actually did show the opposite. Uh, because those surveys uh, for 2010 to 2020 rely on the 2010 official census count as their population base. And, um, you know, there are ways that are easily foreseeable as to how maybe the 2010 population had a population count, had it been conducted in similar manners under similar circumstances to the 2020 count would have actually resulted in a higher figure. And because we know the sources and, and how, um, how officially tracked the components of population change data is, it's likely that the components of change are, are fairly, you know, solidly accurate. And it's that the official counts, um, you know, trying to hand count the millions of people in every single state uh, is more likely to be off. Um, and, you know, that could be for a variety of reasons in 2010 um, compared to 2020. For example, you know, respondents were allowed to respond online for the first time in history. That that has to have played, you know, a much more significant role in feedback and actually turned out to be one of the most accurate ways to gather information for the Census Bureau when they conducted their post-enumeration survey. Um, census outreach spending was basically double what it was uh, in 2010. So the advertising around it. Um, the efforts that that states were putting in to ensure that they were counting as many people as possible were increased. Um, and then at the same time, uh, you know, not only, you know, it was offered in more languages than ever, 47 languages. That was a, that was a big push to count uh, people who are traditionally undercounted, uh, you know, people who may not have a census offering conducted in their native uh, language. 
are the people least likely to respond. Uh, so, so that also played a factor. And then you also have uh, COVID was disrupting all kinds of population changes over time. So, you know, we mentioned uh, kind of group settings, which the PES doesn't include group settings like, like college dorms or nursing homes or prisons or things like that. But that was also likely, you know, playing a factor in, in other areas of, you know, people splitting time, maybe, you know, people are, you know, changing their normal behavior from where they would normally be responding to the census ad or would have responded in 2010. Um, and so their 2020 uh, responses are different just because the temporary circumstances were, were so altered. Um, so there are lots of ways that, that, you know, you could foresee that maybe, you know, given everything we know about the 2020 census versus the 2010 methods, pretty likely that, you know, we would have gotten a different result in 2010, um, especially when you take into consideration that the components of population change come from such solid sources. And that in 2021, the year after the 2020 census came in, you know, quote unquote, higher than expected, uh, the Census Bureau continued to predict record out migration and population decline, the largest they've ever seen in Illinois, despite, you know, what they learned from the 2020 census. Um, they still predicted that. So taken holistically, which is what you should do, you shouldn't just view, you know, the, the, these are all estimates. You shouldn't just view one estimate that tries to estimate the level and take that to mean the population is growing. You should take, you know, the ones that look at the levels plus the ones that look at the components of change and say, okay, well, let's decipher what's going on here. And when you look at everything holistically, uh, it really becomes clear that, all right, we might have, we might not have had the best idea of how many people in total there were, but that doesn't mean that we don't have a good idea of the trends of, you know, is Illinois population growing or shrinking actively? Uh, because we, we continue to see that in the data from the census bureau year after year, even after these, uh, you know, 2010 and 2020 counts come in differently. Um, so all that's to say that, you know, the, the official counts most recently are probably the most accurate head count while changes in the population uh, over time have likely still been very accurate as well. Well, and complicating all of this too is the fact that more census data came out not too long after this new information was revealed. And it showed that about 80% of Illinois communities lost population in 2021. So the, the top line was, I think, Illinois communities of all sizes um, showed a loss of about 114,000 residents in 2021. And that's also census data. Chicago lost about 45,000 people in 2021. Um, so I guess to close, what's the tweet? So if if Pritzker's tweet on May 19th was, you know, now for the first time in our history, Illinois is on the rise with over 13 million people to all of our new residents. Welcome to Illinois. What's the tweet about what's really going on from Bryce Hill? Um, I mean, I think the best, you know, 140 character response is that um, Illinois population is a leaky bucket. You know, we found out the bucket's bigger than we thought before, but there's still a hole. People are still leaving and this is a serious problem and you can't begin to solve problems before you admit that there is one. All right. Well, Bryce, I know you're going to keep monitoring this. You always check out what the data are, are actually showing us and there will be more releases coming up. So we'll stay tuned. Thanks again for your analysis. Yeah, absolutely. Listen and subscribe to The Policy Shop wherever you get your podcasts.